you watchers my name is dad boys in the pit and today we are joined by the one the only lovely akira once again yes we are in the northern lights today this was my but idea it was her idea yes <laughs> but you've seen us react to which heist was it again akira the greatest bank heist in Chinese history. And I'm not going to lie, but that, that was hilarious. That was one <laughs> of was... the worst heists I've ever seen in my whole life. Honestly. But smart, but dumb. Exactly. But oh now... Oh a star. Oh my gosh, you can't even see... <gasps> you can't even see my hand! <laughs> you can sort of see mine. <laughs> it's, it's right here. Yeah, mine's like there. Right there. <laughs> mine's here. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> that's it. Anyways. Today we're watching the greatest bank heist in Japan history. I mean, Japanese sorry. History. Japanese history. <sighs> Is this video going to trigger me? Yes. Most definitely. It's definitely going to trigger you as well, that's for sure. It's going to make me angry, I already know this. <laughs> already, so already, already the it's first... It's only 12.47. If I go to bed in a bad mood, I blame the boys. That's it. Oi. I blame If I go to bed in a bad mood, it's your fault. <laughs> okay, let's, let's uh, see what's triggering about this video. Started then. September 10th, 1968. It was pouring rain. The bank manager of the Nihon Trust Bank was on edge. Someone Can I just say one thing? That's the same mm -hmm. mustache that my PE teacher had. Who? That's the same mustache that my PE teacher had. Mine too, actually. <laughs> the funny thing is, my PE teacher was Welsh. <laughs> Mine was Greek. <laughs> Anyways, just continue watching this triggering heist. Why are they all sweating? That's the real question. Have you <laughs> noticed they're all sweating in all of the videos? <laughs> yeah. I guess they're just triggered. Like us. Someone had threatened his life and those around him over the past few months. Just four days prior, a letter, one of recent many, was sent to his personal residence demanding 300 million yen or his house would be blown up with dynamite. The letter was made up of characters cut out and- I'm sorry, but why does every criminal, you see this in films, like big production films, every film where they've taken someone hostage and they ask for money, it's always in cut out parts of a magazine. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do that? Do they, do they not know how to write? It's so that you can't like match the, the writing to someone else's writing. Did you make another bowl of noodles? We're sponsored by Little. Sponsored by Little's. <laughs> not really. I really wish they were. Really not. Actually, I'm also eating little sweets. Then we are sponsored by Littles. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah. I mean, it's a clever idea, but... I don't just... understand why they don't just type it out. Instead of cutting out magazines. Thank you! <laughs> and pasted from movie magazines. Police were notified, and indeed they kept a close eye on the bank and his home. Though, this did not ease the mind of the bank manager, who shared his concerns with his branch employees. Now, of course, this is Japan, and work is work. The show must go on. With this in mind, the bank manager went on with his duties, sending four of his employees to the nearby <laughs> Toshi- <laughs> He said duties. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. How old are you? 19, 20 next You're year. turning 20. <laughs> Ew, don't say that, Akira. 
I'm younger than you by a year. Shush. So wait, can can we just clarify something? Is this a Japanese bank heist, or are they robbing from Toshiba? Toshiba. <laughs> I was also gonna say. Are they robbing Toshiba, or are they robbing <laughs> a bank? <laughs> This guy literally just picked any pictures he wrote in Japan and that was what came oh, up. Shiba. He was like, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to notice. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a scheduled drop. So off they went taking the company car. But not long after leaving the bank, the four heard police sirens approaching. At that very moment, they happened to be next to a prison of all places. A police officer screeched to a halt in front of the car and frantically got off his motorcycle to warn them. The branch manager's home had just been blown up. People were injured, and some presumably worse. Despite police monitoring the locations, the perpetrator was still able to carry out his threat. But it wasn't over. Additional threats were made. The bank in particular was now a target, and branch employees were at risk, especially those who had left the bank earlier to carry out bank duties in clearly marked company cars. Their car needed to be searched. The officer got down underneath to check the car, but before he could do a proper search, an employee started noticing smoke and flames emerging from the vehicle. Fearing the car was about to explode, the officer desperately tried to roll out of the way. Everyone ran as fast as they could to safety, retreating behind the prison walls. They waited and waited for the explosion, but there was no explosion. They looked back and realized the company car was gone. The police officer was gone. Had he moved the car to safety? Confused? They called the Nihon Trust Bank to find out what was going on. To I'm sorry, what? 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 I'm sorry, what does this, what does a Toshiba factory have to do with a Japanese bank heist? I have no idea. I also want to know what, what happened with the police officer. And the, like, company, and the company car. Like, was he the one that stole the car in the first place? Was he just impersonating a police officer? Or it, did the actual guy um, kidnap the police officer in order to get money and to have leverage? I guess, we're I guess we'll find out. To their relief, the bank manager answered. He was alive and well. In fact, everything was fine there. The bank manager's home was never blown up. As the adrenaline wore off, it finally dawned on them what had happened. This was the moment the perpetrator had been setting up the past few months. Disguised as a police officer, he had now gotten away. I was right! I knew it! Yeah, but... If, wait... Think about it. If he took the company car, where's the motorcycle? Because he pulled, because he pulled in right in front of them. It was a bit odd. I don't know, Bestie. Well, let's find out. With what was to be the bonus payments of five hundred and twenty-three Toshiba employees. Again, are you robbing a bank or are you robbing Toshiba? I made you a boat. <laughs> nice, Akira. Oh, one of these, literally. That's good. I'm, I'm Continue still, I'm, video. I'm, I'm still confused about this video, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, and we're only two minutes in. The stolen amount totaled to 300 million yen or 6 million dollars, the exact amount he had asked for. On the ground, they found various items left behind including a warning flare that the officer must have ignited while under the car to mimic dynamite. A reported 120 pieces of evidence was left behind. 120 bits of evidence? What? I'm so confused. So am I now. I mean, so far, it's not triggering me, it's confusing me. At the crime scene, which is a lot, and would normally be beneficial, 
but this was purposely done to mislead the investigation. This worked. Half a century later, the case remains unsolved. Some say this was the greatest heist in Japanese history. There was no loss of life, no blood spilt. The plan meticulously came. Now oh, didn't they hear the car drive away? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. it just dawned on me. I was like, what? If they were waiting for the explosion, they would have heard the car drive away. Unless they're all deaf and blind. <laughs> so you're telling, okay, so you're telling me, right, that there is one, two, three, four, five rounds of this. So it's the, it's the Chinese video part two, literally. It's literally the same. It's going to be a long video. You might want to edit this like a lot. Oh my God, this is... Ah! Let's continue watching the video. <sighs> ...carried out by a single person and in the end, the money taken. But there are many ways a bank heist can be great. There are many ways it can be notable. Take the case on May 15th, 2016. At around 5 a.m. in the early hours, cash was physically withdrawn from an ATM from a Tokyo 7-Eleven. The amount was a... I'm sorry, Tokyo has 7-Elevens? I'm sorry, are you, are you sure you're talking about Japan? What was it? That, wait, hold on. This took place so many years ago and they had 7-Elevens. I have to search this up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making another boat while you're doing that. Does Tokyo have 7 Elevens? Here's what I found. Well, it looks like Tokyo does have 7-Elevens. Yeah, but they, did they have them that long ago? Wait, go to the start of the video. It said, it said 2016. Are you sure? Did Tokyo have 7-Eleven in 2016? Wasn't it longer? Well, we're about to find out. From Wikipedia, never trust that site. Well, I can confirm, Akira, that mm -hmm. originally by the Japanese affiliate in Yokaido in 1991, it was recognized as a Wally owned sustainable 7 Eleven Japan Co. So they had him in 1991 then in Japan. Nice boat, Akira. I meant two. I said nice, sorry, I meant nice boats. Thank you. This is confusing me still. 100,000 yen, about $880, which was the cash limit. Now, this doesn't seem too bad, but try repeating this 14,000 times across Japan in the span of just two hours. Because I'm sorry, what? Across Japan over two hours. I don't know how. I have well, no idea how they did that. Well, clearly, there's more than one participant doing that. You can't just have mm -hmm. one person. Because, look, imagine how long it would take for one person to do all of those 7 Elevens in one hour. Sorry, two hours. Oh my god, my back, Luca. <sighs> Pause. Pause the video for a bit. <laughs> Stop recording for a bit. 
we will be back in a short second, guys. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we changed our backgrounds. Yeah, we've changed our backgrounds. So I have a nice blurry effect. You can't even see. Wait. You can't How's even. It? You can't even see my tree. You can see my chair. Wait. You. So basically, I've got the blurry effect on. Akira, she has the space. So she's in space at the moment. <laughs> But anyways, where we left off, we left off at a very interesting subject. How can you steal th a lot of money within two hours? Obviously, it was done by more than one person because you can't do a one-man, one-person job in the space of two hours. So imagine how long that would take. But anyways, let's continue watching this confusing Japanese bank heist. Even though so far there's no mention of a bank. Well, there was one, but it didn't make any sense. Because that is exactly what happened. In total, 1.4 billion yen, about 13 million dollars, was taken from ATMs alone. And this wasn't done electronically, it was done in person. Sure, it had to be some sort of a large, coordinated group. Exactly what I said. Mm -hmm. This is, I'm sorry, this is the part where he's going to be like, unfortunately, it was done by one man. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. That would, that would He's going to be like, but to my surprise... It was only done by one person. That's what <laughs> Exactly. Staggering number of transactions in a two-hour frame made even this seem questionable. Compared to other notable cases, the largest known recorded number of participants to have been involved in a single heist wouldn't have been able to pull this off either. Unless, unless... Um, yeah, fair enough. Unless you're Quicksilver. Stay at Superpower. Yeah. Or The Flash. Mm-hmm involving an even larger team would presumably be unwise, as there'd be too many chefs in the kitchen. Now, after police completed their painstaking process of checking security footage of each 7-Eleven store, and yeah, it was only 7-Eleven's hit, they found their answer. In this particular case, the more chefs, the better. It wasn't a team of 50 or 100 or even 200. It was 600 people. How did he get that many people involved? I want to know how he recruit how he recruited that many people. And how do they even get the money out of the ATM machines? And how is this? How I'm sorry. How is this to do with the heist? I have no idea, bro. I guess we'll find out. Six hundred people pulling off a sophisticated, highly coordinated heist using fake credit cards. Quite the. Of course. Of course. Of course. Fake credit cards. <laughs> yeah, but that that leaves me to suspicions though. If if they're fake credit cards, right? How did they get the money in the first place then? Wouldn't, wouldn't the ATM machine not read the card? Yeah. And, like, instantly tell you if it's fake. And this happened I have in... no idea. And those 7-Elevens were hit in 2016. I have questions. <laughs> yeah, and this is very confusing. I have so many questions right now. <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, the first the first strategy was confusing. This is even more confusing because I have literally over 400 questions right now. Well, not really. But I wish. But 
But anyways, let's uh, see what more confusing stuff we can unravel. Wait, wait, wait. Pause, pause the recording for two seconds. We'll be back in a second, guys. We're back. No backgrounds were changed. We had a situation so to we take care to... Yeah, exactly. But don't worry. Not a bad situation, an interesting situation, which doesn't come A confusing you. one, yeah. But not as confusing as this Japanese bank heist. Which so far, we've had one bank heist thing and a 7 Eleven thing, which somehow an organization of 700 people were involved. And they all did that in the space of two hours. But I don't know. I guess we will uh, find out <sighs> more about this bank heist. Contrast from the single perpetrator of our first heist. Not surprisingly, most people have surmised with this many active participants, there must have been links to a large crime organization. But as of today, despite the numbers, no one of note has been caught. Now, here's a quick one. So we've had a, f a dynamite heist, which was just a flare. Mm -hmm. A 7-Eleven heist. And the notes. So and now far. there's a note. Oh, for the love of God. Oh my gosh. We have like another seven minutes to... So... Oh god, here we go. I'm gonna fall asleep. <laughs> This is triggering me a bit. I'm, yeah, me I, as well. I can, I can officially say, guys, I am starting to get a bit triggered now. But I am still confused, but triggered. Kobe, August 7th. Kobe! Kobe! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know it, I, I know it says Kobe, but someone had to say it. Someone had to say it. 1994. 500 and... Okay, so... We went from one year to 2016, and now we're in this year. Okay, got you. 40 million yen was stolen from Fukutoku Bank. I'm sorry, what bank? Fukutoku. 540 million yen was stolen from Fukutoku Bank. Can we cut on the language, please? Fuck, <laughs> so cool. <laughs> that sounds like a type of Japanese food. I'll just have the fuck so cool with a bit of rice. <laughs> Can I please have the fuck so cool with <laughs> sushi? <laughs> fuck <with> so cool rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just cut on the language, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Which is a sizable amount. But what makes this story so unique is that 10 days after the heist, the bank, still reeling from the events, received a note from the robbers. The note read, Thank you very much for the bonus. We can now live on this loot for the rest of our lives. What? So wait. Ten days later, after the heist, someone brings in a, a note, and it has that. What? Okay. Thank you very much for the bonus. We can now live on this loot for the rest of our lives. It was a sincere message of gratitude. Yeah, we all know the reputation Japanese people have for being polite, but this took it to another level. So okay. Pardon me? Okay, so we've had Dynamite 7-Eleven and The Note. What could possibly be next to Kira? Let's find out. Mm. 
Next is the dumpling. <laughs> <laughs> where is next is the, the salmon rolls? <laughs> where is the Akira? <laughs> <laughs> no, the next, next one is, next is the, the case of Akira. <laughs> The next one is the, the boys, literally. It's gonna be it's gonna be the Akira and the last one's the boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Anyways. Akira, are you coming back? Yeah. There's Akira. Anyways, let's see what's next. So the last three cases involved plans being executed perfectly with no oh loss gosh. of life. But Please not the case by. for the next one. Please stand by. <sighs> okay, so there's dynamite, 7-Eleven, the note, and now... And now the health inspector. What's next, Inspector Gadget? The Lilo and Stitch is next, actually. Oh, Hannah means <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but what does the fourth one have to do with a Japanese bank heist? No, but they're all so random. 7-Eleven. So Dynamite, 7-Eleven, The Note, The Note, The Health Inspector. Inspector. <sighs> Triggering me so much. We're going way back. January 26th, 1948. Again in Tokyo, a man in his 40s walked into a branch of the Imperial Bank just before closing time. 16 people were inside, including customers and bank workers. He got everyone's attention and explained he was a government health inspector sent by the US occupation authorities. Remember, this was post-war Tokyo, still under US occupation. The man stated there was a sudden outbreak of dysentery in the area, and he was to carry out inoculations. In post-war Tokyo, the disease was a legitimate threat, so no one really doubted him, add to the fact that the man was wearing an official government armband. He gave all 16 people a pill and a few drops of liquid, which they quickly drank. Now, it wasn't long until they fell, one by one, in agony, with everyone in capacity. Why would they, why would they take it? Why would they do that? <laughs> why? I mean- So a random, a random guy comes up to you. He has a pill and a couple of drops. Please take this. Are you going to say yes? I mean, to be honest, I, I they did kind of believe him. He's wearing an official government armband. Unless he's an imposter. Oh, really? You think? <laughs> Past stated, the so called health inspector grabbed all the money he could find and calmly left. Twelve of the 16 people would later be confirmed dead, including a young child. The solution. I feel bad for that lady. <laughs> I feel so bad for her. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but I feel really bad. I feel really bad. I'm sorry, did he say... 12 people dead and a child. He said 12 people dead, including a child. And, th and this, by the way, is real footage. Of yeah, one. from 1948. Nearly the end of World War II. I think. When did World War II end? When did World War II end? It happened from the 1st of September, 1939, to the 2nd of September, 1945. Oh, this is after. So, yeah, after World War II. <sighs> okay. I bet we look so stupid. <laughs> Us every five minutes, let's ask Google about this question. <laughs> I, I, I can only tell you what the comments are going to be like. You didn't know when you, World War II ended? You 
Oh, stupid. Do you not know where you guys have no brains? <laughs> You're reacting to something that happened ages ago, but you don't know when things happened. <laughs> Anyways, let's continue watching the video. They drank was a cyanide solution. This was a ruthless way to go. Yeah, I thought it would be a cyanide about a heist but what made this even more strange was that the man left behind a business card he left it at the scene the card was marked with the name shigeru matsui apparently from the department of disease prevention which does make sense since he was pretending to be a health official but shigeru matsui turned out to be a real person who actually worked for the department of disease prevention not surprisingly upon investigation matsui was cleared he was not the robber he had several alibis but he told police he had exchanged business cards with 593 individuals. Japanese people have the habit of exchanging business cards with personal details, so this was helpful, as police now had 593 suspects. Over time, they were able to whittle down this number to just 8 cards, 8 suspects, one of which was a man named Saramichi. I'm sorry, 593 suspects? And they managed to bring it to a low amount. Huh? This whole, I'm sorry, but this whole video has made my brain commit suicide. Well, obviously, other people had alibis that it wasn't, that wasn't them. And to this one guy here. Hmm. Saramichi. Saramichi Harasami? Hirasawa. 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 Okay. Hirasawa, a Japanese painter. When Hirasawa was questioned and asked to produce the card of Shigeru Matsui's, which he should have had, he could not. He claimed it must have been in his wallet, which was stolen the other day. He was a victim of pickpocketing. Police had a feeling they knew exactly where the card was. When asked to produce an alibi, he could not. When police looked into his history, they found four previous cases of bank fraud. When they searched his possession, they found a similar amount of money to that stolen from the bank. Hidesao suspiciously refused to divulge how he got this money. Finally, when his face was shown to eyewitnesses, they immediately identified him as the poisoner. Upon further interrogation, Hidesawa confessed. He was arrested for the robbery and the murders, and in 1950, he was given the death penalty. He was sent to death row to await execution by hanging. Case closed. Or is it? But wait, there's more confusing stuff. Oh no. Oh. This is not this is not a one half past one conversation to be having right now, I swear. I'm gonna have a dream this is gonna haunt me. This is gonna haunt me. Oh, it probably will, to be honest. It's probably yeah, gonna I'm gonna have nightmares about this. In the morning, you just, you talk to me and it's like... I'm gonna shout at you if I have any dreams Joker, about this stuff. Joker, this is your fault. I hate you. We're no longer friends. <laughs> We're no longer friends. I'm not going back on your YouTube channel ever again. <laughs> oh my god. What can be next? So we've had Dynamite, 7-Eleven, The Note... The health inspector. <sighs> because after the trial, some had doubts whether Saramichi Hirasawa was indeed oh. the perpetrator. Everything mentioned, circumstantial. In fact, it was revealed his confession was viciously beaten out of him, allegedly tortured. And it was only two of the eyewitnesses who identified him as the criminal. Perhaps he was telling the truth. Perhaps. He was really a victim of pickpocketing, as he claimed. The unexplained origin of the money in his possession was also thought by some to be from his side business of drawing pornographic pictures, revealing this. Thank God we can't see uh, these pictures. Thank God for that. Because uh, if we did, this video would probably be taken down. So. Yeah. And that would give me one strike on my YouTube channel. Because if you get three, your whole YouTube channel gets taken down. And I don't want that. So thank you for blurring these videos out for us. So I don't have to do it myself. Truth to police and to the public would have been detrimental to his reputation as an artist. 
there was also no way Hidasawa could have realistically obtained the ingredients for what turned out to be a military-grade cyanide solution used in the robbery. Interestingly, some have claimed that the true culprit was actually a former member of the notorious Unit 731, a covert biological and chemical warfare research and development unit of the Imperial Japanese Army that undertook lethal human experimentation. I mean, it would make sense, though. Yeah, it actually does. Because, one, how can... How can a normal human being go into a military base, grab the necessary ingredients for a, a cyanide thing? Imagine how badly they, they tortured him into yes. him wanting to die and confess to something he didn't do so he could just die and get it over and done with. Mm. Yeah during wartime. If so, this would explain the accessibility to the poison. The Minister of Justice himself doubted Hirasawa's guilt, and so never signed the death warrant. This opinion was shared by successive Ministers of Justice, so the death sentence was never actually carried out. And so Hirasawa sat in prison on death row for the next 32 years of his life, one of the longest tenures ever on death row. And on May 10th, 1987, he caught pneumonia and died in a prison hospital. Despite the verdict, the case was never truly put to rest, and many people felt that the true culprit all those years ago would have been within grasp if only the focus was on the right person. This brutality happened in 1948, but 70 years on, there would emerge a new type of heist. Please stand by. Please stand by. <sighs> I'm getting so annoyed with this video. <laughs> 25th, 2018. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. So we go from- By the way, for those who missed it, it was January 21st, 2018. Because we know we cut off the video. Yes, Luca, share your thoughts. At this point, I have none. <laughs> yeah. At this point, my brain cells are gone. <laughs> I, have, I have one left. <laughs> <laughs> I can count my brain cells after this video. This will probably be zero at the end of this video. <laughs> Tell me about it. Okay. Land of the rising cybercrime. The Tokyo-based exchange CoinCheck, one of the most prominent virtual currency exchanges in Asia, was to fall victim to the biggest cryptocurrency heist in history. At 2.57 a.m. using overseas servers, hackers disguising themselves as authorized users were able to enter the system. They remained undetected for the next eight and a half hours, stealing 58 billion yen worth of the cryptocurrency NEM, which is about $530 million. Then they were gone. This incident became an embarrassment to the Japanese government, who had been trying to make Tokyo the global center for cryptocurrency. CoinCheck revealed they failed to implement the required extra layer of security, but even worse, the stolen currency had been kept online in a hot wallet, rather than in a much more secure offline storage facility known as a cold wallet. This is similar to if a convenience store kept significantly large amounts in a cash register instead of an off-premise bank vault. Now, one of the stranger aspects of the heist is that the stolen virtual funds were able to be traced online, because transactions for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are all public. And so the $530 million worth was eventually traced back to 11 specific addresses. But the identities of those sending and receiving the money, unfortunately, remained anonymous. Indeed, no one yet has been caught, but the developers of NEM were able to label the 11 addresses with specific warning tags for all to see. They also set up a tracking tool to automatically reject exchanges involving the stolen funds. Of course, the most frustrating part of this is that it all easily could have been avoided if CoinCheck just added that extra layer of security. And really, it's not just big companies. Most people today are too lax when it comes to online security, using the same password for every account they have. I literally have no words, whatever.
Yeah, same. This has been the world's most confusing bank heist in Japanese history. The first one, the Chinese one, was just triggering. It was also confusing, but this one's even more confusing. Yeah, it was confusing, but the other one was triggering, so it kind of yeah. it kind of annoyed me a bit. But this one, it didn't really make sense because it had nothing to do with bank heists. Well, two of them had nothing to do with bank heists. A Seven Eleven. And a note. And an inspector. And a health, yeah, health inspector. Like. And yeah, the health inspector. But anyways, if you want us to react to more stuff from Japanese history, Hong Kong history, or even Chinese history, let us know down in the comment section down below. Make sure you guys go press that subscribe button, press that bell icon next to the subscribe button, which get you notified whenever I upload a new video. Stay awesome, boy puts, and stay cool, girl puts, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!